looking back at the horrors of communism, it makes people giggle instead of kind of go for tissue and want to cry. Uh, you'll see the Che Guevara shirts, and but that's just a small part of it. If you talk about people fighting communism back in the day, it's kind of like, oh, this was silly. Everyone was hysterical. It wasn't that big a deal. Well, it kind of is a big deal when literally every phone call you make, someone is listening to, and when kids are taught at school to turn their parents into the police. While this was going on overseas in many countries for decades, in full force was the American Excuse Factory, just brushing aside all the horrors that were taking place and even pretending that things were wonderful. And this was a model for us to follow. The best example of this was a journalist named Lincoln Steffens who wrote for a publication called McClure's. In 1919, he went to Russia. He came back and he said, I have been over into the future and it works. Now, some historians say he wrote that line even before he left for Russia. So he was going to whitewash that place no matter what he saw. But it wasn't just him. It was a lot of American intellectuals who went over there and told us wonderful stories about how great everything was. So we had Jane Addams. We had Rexford Tugwell, who served under FDR. We had all these books coming forth, like The Challenge of Russia by Sherwood Eddy. Or how about this one? George Counts' The Soviet Challenge to America. Or how about this one? Maxwell Stewart, Where Everyone Has a Job. And in fact, John Dewey, the famous educator, said in the New Republic magazine in 1928 that I have never seen anywhere in the world such a large proportion of happy and intelligently occupied children. Then there's Oswald Garrison Villard, who was editor of The Nation magazine, which still publishes to this day. Despite not speaking Russian, never having met a Russian peasant, he still felt qualified to say in 1929, after more than a decade of one-party rule and concentration camps and systematic censorship that what we were dealing with in Russia was what he called the social, moral, political, industrial, economic emancipation of a people. My people had a very different approach to dealing with the atrocities of communism. Rather than make excuses for it, sometimes we made jokes. And here's how one of them goes. Khrushchev, who succeeded Stalin, is sitting at his desk. Things are going very badly for Nikita, but he's got a drawer that says, in case of emergency, open me. He opens the drawer, and the first letter from Stalin says, blame everything on me. So he goes out and says, everything bad that's happening was Stalin's fault. Things keep getting worse. People don't have food. The factories aren't producing. And across the ocean, the United States has elected a hunk for president. Khrushchev goes back to his desk, pulls open that drawer, reads that second letter, and it says, write two letters to your successor. And the argument in Soviet Russia and the argument that their apologists in the West made was, you can't make an omelet without breaking a few eggs. But what's really disturbing about that quotation is those so-called eggs were the lives of tens of millions of people. And as someone else famously pointed out, where were the omelets? Tom, how'd you like it if I invite you over to my house? And I said, Tom, I'm going to make you a great, delicious breakfast. It'll be the kind of breakfast no one has ever seen before. It'll be the most stupendous breakfast ever undertaken. It's a whole new level of breakfast, and we're leaving the old ways behind. I can't wait. OK, so breakfast isn't ready, but when you come for brunch, I'm going to have the best brunch you'll ever seen. It'll be stupendous. We're leaving the old ways of making brunch behind, and there's going to be so much food, you won't know what to do with yourself. I'm going to get tired of all this winning. Okay, here's the deal. Brunch isn't here, but if you come back for lunch, or possibly dinner, or maybe supper, I think that's different. Michael, I waited till 2 o'clock in the morning. Where the f*** are my omelets? You're still here? 